Zero Shot Video Generation, Text to Music, Mid Journey V6, a new king of the open source LLMs called Mixtral, and exciting news from Apple. It's been a wild week as always in artificial intelligence. Let's break it down. We'll start with Mid Journey version 6, which was just released a couple days ago. Mid Journey has been kind of the reigning champion of generative AI art and version six takes that even a little bit further than the rest of the models. It's kind of crazy to see where these guys have come in such a short time and how we've gotten to this photorealistic model already. So what's new with the V6 base model, and it should be noted that it's in alpha testing, so things are gonna iterate and change over the coming weeks, but much more accurate prompt following, as well as the ability for it to handle longer prompts, improved coherence and model knowledge. So it's gonna generate more coherent images based on the text input that you put in to the prompt, improved image prompting and remix mode, minor text drawing ability. This is interesting. So you have to write your text in quotes and you have to use style raw or lower stylized values. That's at least gonna help, but this is kind of like STXL, how it can generate coherent text. Mid journey is heading that way as well. And then both improved upscalers with subtle and creative modes, and it increases your resolution by 2x. There are a couple things that you're gonna lose from this. You're gonna lose the ability to do pan and zoom and the describe command, but those are all coming soon. I'm sure as soon as this is out of alpha. If you want a really deep dive and you wanna see a whole bunch of images that have been generated with this, check out my video that I did this last week. Next up in the list has to be Suno AI. They paired up with Microsoft Copilot, no, not the GitHub Copilot. I know the Microsoft naming conventions make zero sense to me, but they call Copilot for GitHub Copilot, but they also call their Windows 11 desktop integration of their chatbot. They also call that Copilot. Doesn't make any sense to me, but that's where we're at. So if you fire up Copilot, you can now use Sono as a plugin. We've got a full length video covering all of that in depth over here. Check that out. But essentially you can have this make you a song about virtually anything. I've been having it make rap songs about how my kids need to clean up around the house, things like that, that are kind of silly, but also really fun and addicting. About the company, Suno is building a future where anyone can make great music, whether you're a shower singer or a charting artist, we break barriers between you and the song you dream of making. No instrument needed, just imagination from your mind to music. Here are a couple examples. Yo, it's time to clean up, kids, let's get it right. Mom and dad's at high yoga, we gotta do it tight. Grab the broom, sweep it clean, make it shine. You know the checklist. Yeah, we got the brain, we got the flow. We're taking over all the codes that you know from the depths of the internet. We rise up strong. Really cool stuff. And I think it's just a matter of time until we see one of these charting at the top of the billboard charts, but you know, we'll see what happens. Over to Google Research News, they've launched something called Video Poet. It's not quite available for us to test out yet, but they've at least got some really cool demos up on their site. So it's a large language model for zero shot video generation, essentially text to video. You give it a prompt and it's gonna in one shot, one try, it's gonna make something that's coherent. There's a lot of like the things we see from Runway and some other models. Let's look at some of these examples. We've got a dog listening to music with headphones, highly detailed 8K. I hate that they have these like 8K, 4K. Mid Journey actually just got rid of that and Stable Diffusion has been moving that way. So hopefully we get rid of all this nonsense where you have to add all these extra prompt details. At any rate, a large blob of exploding, splashing rainbow paint with an apple emerging. That's kind of cool. You can see the apple sort of forming up through the middle of this paint blob. A robot cat eating spaghetti, digital art. I've got to say that's a lot better than the famous kind of Will Smith video generation that went around the internet a few months ago. A pumpkin exploding in slow motion. Really good detail on that. These are actually pretty good. And you can see they've got a couple dozen other examples. And it continues down at the bottom. Video Poet can output high motion variable length videos given a text prompt. Video to audio. Video Poet can also output audio to match an input video without using any text as guidance. Unmute the videos to play the audio. All right, creepy and interesting at the same time. And the idea here is that you can use generative models to tell visual stories. This, this might actually be where we get to with storytelling in the future where you have this model that's creating a story and then you've got a second model that's actually illustrating it or producing video on the fly. This might in the future get us to even an exciting place where we've got real-time television and even movie generation. I've talked about that in the past. I think that's inevitably where this is all going. Now the next three here are somewhat loosely related and I'll tell you why. 
versus AI says that they have an AGI breakthrough. And they wrote an open letter to the board of directors at OpenAI. And here it is if you wanna take a look at it and read through it yourself. But essentially it says deep learning's not enough. You need another sort of breakthrough. And it makes sense at the core of things. What they're arguing is that these fixed weight models, things like GPT-4 from OpenAI or any of the downloadable open source AI models have fixed weights. They can't learn as they go. You have to feed a whole bunch of information and data into these models. They're super data hungry. They're memory inefficient. They run fairly slow for what they are, CPU intensive, and they can't learn on the fly. And I could be wrong here, but I think the approach they're taking actually aligns really closely with what Mixtral's doing. And if you haven't heard of Mixtral, it's one of the most compelling open source LLMs out right now, and it just sort of took the market by storm. And what it is, is it's a high quality, sparse mixture of experts, SMOE for short. The model has open weights, so they haven't just open sourced the model, they've actually open sourced the weights, which takes it a step further. The weights are sort of, you can think of them as the knobs that adjust how the neural network actually behaves. Mixtral performs Llama to 70B, so 70 billion parameter model, that's huge, on most benchmarks with 6x faster inference. And the wild part is it matches or outperforms GPT 3.5 on most standard benchmarks, but you can actually run this on your home computer. And here's really the key to what makes this model special. Instead of being this massive, gigantic model, it's actually eight distinct groups of parameters. That's why it's called 87B. So it's eight, seven billion parameter models all sort of bundled into one. In total, when you take out the duplication, it has 46.7 billion total parameters, but it only uses 12.9 billion parameters per token. And I know that's a lot to absorb, but really what it means is this has the memory footprint of a 12.9 billion model. It has the speed of a 12.9 billion parameter model, but it has the performance of a much, much larger model. And I think this is exactly what Versus is trying to do with their open letter to OpenAI. They're trying to build a model, I think, that has hundreds if not thousands of these small sparse models that are highly specialized in a single task. As time goes on, you can simply add more of these small models, providing new information to the entire larger model while still maintaining performance and memory footprint. And if that's right, I think sooner than later, we're gonna see GPT-4 plus level performance out of a model that you can run right on your own home PC. And that leads us to something I read over on Mac rumors. Apple develops breakthrough method for running LLMs on iPhones. Oh man, this could be a huge deal. Apple's been relatively silent and we know that Siri is kind of trash when it comes to what's available now from even open source LLMs. And it makes sense why they haven't spoken up too much. All the newer Apple products have an inference engine built in. They're able to process AI models directly on the phone and they're really powerful. The problem is they're limited in memory. And so if you think about it, in order to get a decent LLM on the phone, it just doesn't have enough RAM. And on top of that, even if you could load it into the phone's memory, you wouldn't have enough RAM left over for running any other programs or software on the phone. Apple could either wait several generations until memory catches up and they can produce a phone that has a whole bunch of RAM or they could figure out another way to do it, and that's what they've done here. Apple AI researchers say they've made a key breakthrough in deploying large language models on iPhones and other Apple devices with limited memory by inventing an innovative flash memory utilization technique. And here's what that means in practical terms. An iPhone 14 Pro Max has up to a terabyte of flash storage. This is much slower than RAM, but Apple researchers have figured out a way to run a large language model on flash memory instead of directly in RAM. And if this works and it's performant, it means you're gonna run an entire large language model directly on your phone. You're gonna have an AI assistant in your pocket. And I think that could be the next big breakthrough that Apple needs. And those were my favorite pieces of AI related news this week. As always, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm Brian Lovett, this is All Your Tech AI. We'll catch you next time. Thanks.